So just like we could do uh, implicit differentiation with uh, single variable functions, we can do the same thing in uh, with multivariable functions as well. So let's look at the uh, example of x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 6xyz equals 1. So this defines some surface in R3 and we are tasked with finding the partial derivative of z with respect to x. Okay, so now just based on the fact that we're looking at dz dx here, this means that we can make the interpretation that we are thinking of um, z as being a function of x and y, where x and y are independent. Okay, so <clears throat> this uh, function, actually, sorry, this surface, we can't solve this equation explicitly for z, so we can't write it as a function. In fact, um, if you want to see what this surface looks like, it's this. It's some kind of crazy banana pants surface. Who knows what that's used for? For I don't know, but um, we can still think of uh, z as a function of x locally. So for instance, if we're just like right around here, then that looks like the graph of a function. If we're somewhere over here, then that looks like the graph of a function. There's other places where it definitely does not. For instance, like it fails the vertical line test, puncturing the surface here and then coming out again down below. So <clears throat> it's not gonna give us the graph of a, uh, a function around there. But anyways, we don't need to know or do any of that stuff in order to figure out what the partial derivative with respect to x is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, take that equation and differentiate both sides with respect to x. Okay. And so um, using linearity on the left, we have that it's the partial of um, x cubed with respect to x, which is gonna be, actually let's keep purple, 3x squared. And then it's gonna be the partial of y cubed with respect to x, which is zero, because it's got no x's in it. Um, and then it's going to be the derivative of z cubed with respect to x, which is not zero because z is a function of x. Ooh, burn. Okay, so this is um, z of x, y cubed, right? Okay, so these are the things that we're adding together. And then we've also got the partial derivative with respect to x of x, y times z of x, y. Oh, and I forgot a six. Okay, well here, we'll stick the six in there. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, you've got a zero. Okay, so let's see. So three x squared comes along for the ride. We can ditch the zero. Now for the uh, ddx of z, let's see. So we've got chain rule here. So this is, we've taken z of x and then we've cubed it. So going, uh, working through that backwards, we've got um, three z, of x squared times by the chain rule, the derivative of the thing that got cubed, the thing that got cubed with z. So we need the derivative of z, okay? And then, let's see. Um, now we've got, we actually have a, a product. So we've got um, x is over here, and we've got x is hiding inside z. So we've got to use the product rule over here. So let's see, so uh, the first, so if we do the one that's got the derivative on the six x y portion, then that will be six y times z. And then we'll have six x y times the derivative of z, which is just going to be dz. And then this is all equal to zero. So let's see, so um, now I guess we've got three x squared plus six y z uh, plus, and then we've got three z squared plus six x y 
all times partial of z with respect to x. And so then we can solve for dz dx. And we get um, 3x squared plus 6yz. Uh, and uh, with a minus sign out in front. And then on the bottom, 3z squared plus 6xy. There we go. So we have obtained the partial derivative uh, of z with respect to x implicitly from that equation. And so that'll tell us how the height changes if we uh, move x and y as we uh, are, are traveling around on that surface. Um, <clears throat> And it also says some other things, like for instance, um, if you look at where the denominator is equal to zero, it's going to be undefined, right? So for example, if we put z equal to zero and um, y equal to zero, so that's going to be on the x-axis. And if you go back to the surface and see where the x-axis comes out, it's going to punch out uh, right coming out through here somewhere. And you can see that's a place where the, the tangent plane to the surface would indeed be vertical, so it would be undefined.